As a huge McLaren fan, two years ago when this car was just released, I actually placed an order on it. I really wanted one. However, with a long wait and not knowing when the car will be delivered, I bought another one, a Porsche GT3 992. Did I really make a mistake in buying the Porsche GT3? Let's find out. quite a long wait for us to get our hands on the brand new McLaren Artura. And I'm actually super, super excited to finally drive this car. We have been all waiting for a new McLaren because everything that they have been doing has been incredible. But here and there, it used to be very similar car, very similar infotainment, very similar drive, very similar noise. Everything was McLaren and some things were just not enough for us as owners and for us as petrol heads. We were missing a few fine tunes. And here we are, they made a car that's apparently fine tuned. And I'm here to really figure this out. Finally, have a brand new, completely reworked interior from McLaren. We actually have a navigation system that actually works. We have two spaces for two phones. We have two places for the bottles. And I think this part is great. This part has also been reworked. Uh, not the steering wheel, which I love. Thank you, McLaren, for keeping it. However, there's this new screen, which is perfect, HD. But it's so close to the steering wheel that when I'm driving, and I look at it and then I look at the road, it takes me like a few seconds to just reconcentrate, recalibrate my eyes. When McLaren announced that the V6 Hybrid will be fitted in the new upcoming model, we were skeptical for many reasons. Reliability was the first thought, followed by the disappointment of losing once again to climate change. Well, today I can say that I really don't mind this whole concept of having a hybrid supercar because the feeling of doing this Pop it into electric, the engine just shuts down. And listen to it, we are in a full EV mode, fully electrical, no noise. So I'm not disturbing any beautiful animals out here in those forests. I can quietly cruise for 30 kilometers and then the combustion engine will go back on and it will recharge the battery. So in about 20, 30 minute time, I can go back into the EV mode. Or for example, I can get out of my garage, get out of my house, get out of the city, all in electrical without making any noise, without attracting any unnecessary attention, get on a mountain road like that, push this thing here into sport, maybe even into track, downshift, and then just do this. I can definitely tell you that this car does not lack power. It's when you put your foot down, it just goes forever. Because there is the electric motor that kicks in, there's the combustion motor that kicks in, and then again, there's the electric motor that kicks in, and it just goes and goes and goes forever. With such a small package of just having a V6 with the two turbos mounted in the middle, the engine is pretty much flat, it's 120 degree V, which is quite an interesting architecture. The handling and overall driving experience is modestly playful. The hydraulic steering is a blessing, coupled to a steady rear wheel drive power output that allows you to keep control. As for the regeneration function, there isn't any, so recharging your battery will have to be dealt with a combustion engine generating electricity. In true McLaren tradition, there already have been some issues with their Tura in the development stage, that's why they have delayed the deliveries of those cars. We are two years in since they have announced it. No deliveries have been made. However, I've been thinking about it and I thought maybe it's not such a bad thing because when they announced the car two years ago, 
uh, everybody said, why didn't you keep the V8? Why does it have a V6 hybrid system? The V8 was great. But now we all got used to those hybrids. We all got used to driving electrical only. And a lot of people are saying, including me, that it's actually quite cool to have the feature to take the car out of the garage on electrical, no noise, drive out of the town, also electrical, get into the mountains, turn on the combustion engine, and then just go nuts. Let's speak of the devil, this V6 hybrid. 680 horsepower, 95 horsepower, which are produced by the electric engine. Zero to 100 in three seconds. Sounds really juicy, but is it too much? Some people say that obviously there is the Ferrari 296 GTB, which has 800 horsepower, which is faster. My question to you is, how much power do you really need to enjoy a car like that on a day like that? I completely disagree that you need 800 horsepower. I drove the 296 and it's just too fast. It's too quick. You cannot actually enjoy the car because you're just 130, 150 kilometers an hour and just literally blink of an eye. This car has a lot of power. In my opinion, it has enough power. It does a very good power output. The car doesn't want to scare me. The car doesn't want to kill me. I feel that I'm in control of the car all the time and I think this is the most valuable point. And also just a quick uh, comeback on the 296 GTB, obviously the car is way more expensive, way more expensive. And also I just completely hate the, the tactile interior with all the tactile buttons. Here in the McLaren Artura, what I really like is that they kept the McLaren DNA. They kept the steering wheel, thank you McLaren. They kept the paddle shifts here, they're carbon, they're big, they're very nice to touch. You can upshift here, you can downshift here, but you can do the same in reverse. They didn't add any useless buttons on the steering wheel. I don't need the volume button here. I don't need to change my music from the steering wheel. The steering wheel is there for me to just drive and just to enjoy. Everything in this car is perfected and it works and it's great and I really like it. been able to deliver such a good chassis one car after another 600LT, the 720S, the 570S all of those cars have been amazing in their chassis so well balanced such a good response from the road together with hydraulic steering I don't remember the last time I drove a car that had such a good balance and was just so easy to drive I feel like anyone could just drive this car without being scared without being intimidated by the power with even having the ability to play with it and not being too afraid going into a wall. Even in the GT3, sometimes you're like, ah, there I should be quite careful. The car has a different architecture. The car has been built differently. The car has been also built with different thoughts in mind. This car, I think is for everyone. And to really finalize the day with my final thoughts after spending full day with a new McLaren Artura, I'm happy. I'm very happy with what McLaren have made. I'm very happy we all waited for it and we finally got it. It's a great product. It's very interesting. I'm sure there are a lot of people which will be very interested in buying a McLaren. I can say it's a very good car it's a very good package except of it just missing the drama for me the craziness the madness being a bit wild what all the other McLarens used to be they used to be wild they used to be mad the screaming V8 on high revs it was crazy and did I make a good choice with the 911 GT3 well I probably did
so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please, please put a like, please subscribe to our channel and there will be way more mad content with crazy cars coming, I promise. If you have any questions, if you wanna share some of your thoughts about the Artura, leave it in the comments below. Let's have a conversation. See you in the next video. Bye.